Good morning and welcome to St. John's. Welcome also for anybody outside. We celebrate today the Feast of the Epiphany of the Lord. And Father Bob, our pastor, is celebrant, and Silverio, a deacon, is homeless today. Please stand for the first time.
Well, God, on this day, revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, granting your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine for your, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings in the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the seed shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. made known to me by revelation. 
In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, and it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So this ancient solemnity of the Lord, which we celebrate today, is the manifestation of God in Christ, the manifestation of Christ to the nations, and the extension of God's saving love to all people. Now, the word epiphany comes from the Greek uh, epiphanian, which means reveal. It's translated as appearance or manifestation, and it marks the first manifestation of God in Jesus to the Gentiles, which are all of us. It also reveals that Christ, the Jewish Messiah, had come not only for the Jews, but for the whole world. This story of the Magi's visit was an early signal that the Church of Christ would be a universal church. It is a feast to help us realize that God intended variety. But this story speaks of more than Gentile kings worshiping a child. It speaks of effort and quest, of signs observed and followed, of risk and danger, of deception and narrow escape. 
And it says that through all these, a child became the revelation of God to the world. Ironically, though, it is foreigners who strive and seek to find, who open their treasures and offer gifts, and who go forth to distant lands announcing the good news of God among us. But who were these foreigners? No one really knows for sure. Matthew tells us that they were wise men from the East. And although many translations are given for magi, such as magicians and astrologers, those who study history say it is very likely that these so-called wise men were priests of the Zoroastrian religion who worshipped the God of Light. The Magi believed that every person had a guiding light in heaven which appeared as a star, and the greater the person born, the brighter the star. So it's no wonder that when they saw the star at its rising, they trekked across the desert in search of one who must be great. And what do we know about their names? In Matthew's Gospel, there are no names mentioned, nor does it say how many they were. It's from the three kinds of gifts that the tradition of three wise men developed in the fifth century. And the names we have for them today, Balthazar, Melchior, and Caspar, were first found in sixth century mosaics in Ravenna, Italy but they were only attributed to the wise men in the 8th century. So because of this lack of information, legends abound regarding the Magi. One such legend has it that they were of different ages. Caspar was a very young man, Balthazar was in his middle age, and Melchior was an old man. When they arrived in Bethlehem at the cave of the Savior's birth, they went in one at a time. When Melchior, the old man, went into the cave, there was no one there but a very old man his own age, with whom he quickly became at home. And they spoke together of memory and gratitude. The middle-aged Balthazar encountered a middle-aged teacher when he went to the cave, and they talked passionately of leadership and responsibility. And when young Caspar entered, he met a young prophet, and they spoke words of reform and promise. And then, when they had all gone outside, after going in one by one, the three of them took their gifts and went in together, and upon entering the cave a second time, there was no one there but a few days old infant. Later on, they understood the Savior speaks to us at every stage of our lives. The old hear the call to integrity and wisdom. The middle age hear the call to productivity and responsibility. And the young hear the call to identity and intimacy. These wise men truly catch our imagination and noticeably more so than the other group, which we have here, the shepherds in Matthew's Christmas story. And there may be a powerful reason for that. In the Gospels, the shepherds are told everything. They are encountered by an extremely talkative angel who tells them every little detail, where the child is to be found, how to get there, and who's with him. When the shepherds arrive at the cave, the angels appears again to verify the place, just in case they got it wrong. And when the shepherds return to their flocks, they're guided by a whole heavenly choir of angels singing to them along the way. These shepherds have no doubts, no questions, no problems, no persecutors, and no mystery. They didn't have to seek information. It was handed to them on a silver platter. In essence, they had it made. But that's not our experience today. The easy come and easy go shepherds are not for us. The, the, uh, our experience is more like the struggling magi. We, like them, are searchers. We have difficulty with the large questions of life. 
We are harassed by our modern Herods who seek to destroy us and our children with consumerism, materialism, and greed. And it's much more difficult for us today to deceive these Herods than it was for the Magi. We wonder and worry about family life, illness, crime, cancer, war, recession, and death, especially during these troubled times. Yes, we too would like heavenly messengers and heavenly insurances like the shepherds got, but the fact is, we experience neither. My friends, there's no doubt about it. It's the Magi, that struggling band of pilgrims crossing a hot desert with only a vision and a hope to guide them that we identify with. They're our kind of people, and we'll never tire of telling stories about them. So we'll stick with them because the bottom line is they were searchers and so are we. But they are searchers who have taught us something and this is their ultimate legacy. They searched together and so have left us the clear message that we must always do the same. We can't search, we can't travel, we can't uh, find alone. Even the Lone Ranger had a companion. We need one another. And that's why we're here in this church this morning. Alone, we tend to become eccentric, distorted, and lost. We need the collective wisdom of the community. We need the collective support and prayers of our fellow pilgrims. When we come together with one voice and ask the Lord to have mercy on us, it's more than just the total sum of all of us here. We are a caravan on the journey of life. We are a church. We listen together. We pray together. We cry out together. We're strengthened and comforted by each other. And really, there's no better way to travel. So my sisters and brothers, the bottom line is this. The Magi didn't have all the answers. And neither do we. They had a tyrant for a king after them. And in many ways, so do we. All the tyrants that cause us to sin and to give in to immorality and greed. But on their life's travels, what they did have was fellowship and the light of Christ to guide them. And so do we. Jesus left us the Holy Spirit as a guide to illuminate our way and, to sh and we share in the fellowship at the Eucharistic table. But the best part of the wondrous Magi story comes at the end. They left us a promise. For at last they found what they were looking for. And as the legend says, each in his own way. We also will find what we are looking for, each in our own way. For our Savior speaks to us at every stage of our lives. And when we do, this will be our epiphany. salvation 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they reveal the heart of Christ through their assistance to the poor, the exile, and the refugees. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all from the worst of the COVID pandemic, especially the elderly and frail, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends and for those listed in our bulletin sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, those who rest in our cemeteries, and those we remember in our garden of poinsettias, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all peoples, you revealed your Son as the light of all nations. Grant that the light of Christ may bring us safely through the darkness of this world to the radiant glory of your kingdom, where Christ lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Before you, 
in your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind and witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
It's a great joy that we're here. Thanks, Philip and Sharon. And, uh, Stephanie. Steph. Steph for playing uh, the Lily. piano. Thank you. And her daughter's up there. Lily. Lily. Is it Lily up there? There's Lily. Hi, Lily. It's wonderful to see the little ones here. So uh, it's a great joy. And thank you for all being here. Of course, for helping out reading the Eucharistic ministers and the twins serving. And of course, uh, Deacon Silverio preaching. Um, wonderful that we uh, get to uh, come and hear someone like this preach. I get a kick out of it because for me, it's such a great joy to actually sit there and listen to someone else. It's uh, I talk way too much. But um, even when Johnny and I are traveling, we often we always sit in the pews because it's uh, we miss that experience. Because serving at the altar is different. But you know, Epiphany is a very special time for us, and it should be a very unique time for us. We should remember those special moments in our lives where the light of God shone through and we really recognized it. And the truth is, I would say that is true in all of our lives. Certain moments in my life, my mom and dad, certain moments I really recognized how much they love me. They're important. And even with the wedding couples, I often ask them, you know, so I have something to say during the homily, I would say, what was that special moment where you knew you loved each other, you know? And there's special moments in our lives. They're like epiphany, see? Beautiful moments when the love of God and the love of each other shines forth. Certainly even with kids, with brothers and sisters, there are certain moments. I have four brothers, so there are certain moments, a few, but there are certain moments where we really recognize the wonderful gift of love that we share with one another. So I ask uh, parents and uh, those who are married, certainly remember those moments today the very special moments of love, because they are a gift. And even with kids, remember those moments with moms and dads. They're important for us today, because in those moments, we also experience that incredible love that God gave to the world. So I better shut up or I'll start preaching. So <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Have a blessed, glorious, and wonderful week. Let us stand and pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith and hope and in charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as the light shining in darkness. May God make you too a light for your sisters and brothers. Amen. Amen. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Almighty Father, his Son, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And have a blessed week.
from sin.